Alright, so I make decks all the time. And whenever I'm done making the deck, when the core concept is uh, established, I like to just throw in staple cards to fill it up. And because of that, I know which cards actually work great and which ones don't. So if you're making a new deck and you just want to a list of good staple cards, I have them here in order of which ones are the best down to the least best. But all of them are good. So to start off, we have Compulse. You see, all the good ones are at the top, and they're all limited and semi-limited for a reason. Compulse, I have it as number one. Most people will disagree with me on this, but I've always loved this card ever since Synchros were introduced. It was probably the only way to take out Stardust, and I had always put in... Uh, before they put it at one, I would put in at least three of these in almost any deck I made. Um, number two, Bottomless Trap Hole. Uh, it's really good as well. Uh, Torrental Tribute, I don't really put it in as much as I do these two cards, even though it is at one. And it is really good, it's just not as good as these two. Solemn Warning, I rarely put that card in. Uh, Dimensional Prison, I like to add this card in if I can, but um, I don't really that much. Mirror Force, I don't really put that much in either, unless I'm doing a really trap-heavy deck. Usually these two suffice. Fiendish Chain, I like to throw either Fiendish Chain or Breakthrough Skill in any deck I'm making. If the deck won't allow me to use Fiendish Chain, I'll throw in Breakthrough Skill, but I always prefer Fiendish Chain over Breakthrough Skill. Unless it's like a really mill heavy deck, then Breakthrough Skill. Unless the deck uses a lot of Evac Vealer, then I could probably just forget both of these, but if I do, I'll probably put in a Fiendish Chain or two. And then, yeah, break through skill. It's if you can't really put in Fiendish Chain, or if you can't run a Vacuvealer in the deck for whatever reason, and you want to run more than three Fiendish Chain, you can add in some breaker skills. Or if the deck won't allow you to use Fiendish Chain for whatever reason, break through skill. Because you always want some kind of effect negation in your deck. If your deck doesn't revolve around negating effects, or if it has a very specific OTK, then you probably don't need any of these cards anyway. But if it is a normal deck, normal meaning it like goes for XYZ summons or synchros or some kind of beatdown, you need some kind of way to negate your opponent's effects because effect monsters are what pretty much dominate this game. Starlight Road, it's not as good as it used to be back when Heavy Storm was around, but with almost everyone using Torrental Tribute and Dark Hole, or more cards that attack twice, I mean target two or more cards, you know, like that Black Wing card. Can't remember the name off the top of the head though. Um, yeah, Starlight Road will be. It's still a pretty decent choice. Call the Haunted. It's really the only way to target monsters in your grave without any kind of restriction since Monster Reborn's gone. I love to add this card in if I can. Uh, Dimensional Slide. Very underrated card that people rarely ever use, but is actually really good. Because you see, there's a lot of cards out there that can't be destroyed by card effects. And Dimensional Slide just bypasses it and banishes it, kind of like Dimensional Prison. Not even Bottomless Trap Hole does, because Bottomless Trap Hole destroys the monster first and then removes it from play. So if it's immune to being destroyed by card effects, it won't work. While well, Dimensional Slide just banishes it. And you can only activate the effect if you special summon. And if you're playing any kind of good deck where you need a die, uh, we're looking at a list of staple trap cards. Dimensional Slide should fit the bill. It's really good, and if you can fit it in, you should. But, like, see, there's a whole other row of trap cards above it that are just slightly better. Uh, Threatening Roar. Um, and Wabaku. I should put these two together, because they both do pretty much the same thing. It's a way to stop the battle phase from happening if... Uh, your opponent, you know, uses an MST in one of your face down cards. You can flip either one of these to stop you from taking any damage that turn. If you can only choose one of them, choose Threatening Roar over Wabaku. Unless you're running some kind of deck that it's actually good for monsters to attack, you know, like Gladiator Beast. Obviously, you're going to be using Wabaku anyway. But if you're not using Gladiator Beast or any other kind of deck where you can like destroy cards with the attack, like Closed Forest. Uh, you want to use Threatening Roar over Wabaku, because Threatening Roar is better, because your opponent can't attack at all. And there are a couple of monsters who, like I said, can still gain their effects if they attack, like Gladiator Beast. There are other ones, I just can't think of them off the top of my head, like Catastrophe, the level 5 ally of justice 
uh, Synchro Monster. He can still destroy your cards even if he doesn't actually, you know, destroy them by battle, which Wabaku prevents. It's the effect that goes off when it actually attacks, which is why Threatening Roar is better. Because uh, that Ally of Justice card does come out quite often. Magic Cylinder. It's good in your deck, it's just there's so many uh, better alternatives to it. Unless you're running some kind of burn deck, then you'll obviously use this one over these ones anyway. If not, and you're just looking for staples, it's a good choice. But, like I said, there's other cards that are better. Uh, Trap Stun and Royal Decree. Now, Trap Stun is better because Royal Decree completely negates all your other traps. And Trap Stun, you can actually use traps cards with your deck with trap stun. Royal Decree, you have to be prepared to not use your own traps. So if you're running no traps, and you're not running a frog deck where you can't have a back row, then Royal Decree is a better choice than trap stun. If you're running any other kind of deck, then trap stun is better than Royal Decree for stopping traps. Uh, Dark Bribe, if... Well, it's just a good card, because it can stop any spell or trap, and the downside is your opponent draws a card, which is a pretty bad downside, but if you use it to stop, let's say, you know, a Solemn Warning, or a Torrental, or a Bottomless, or an Evac, where they can only have one in their deck anyway, then stopping that one card is good, and they can draw another card, and they can't draw into another one of these because they're already at limited. Uh, so, but yeah, that's what it's good for, is stopping cards that can only have one in the deck. That way you know they can't use it again. Or stopping key cards, you know, like a rekindling or something like that. Alright, and last but not least, Dust Tornado. Now, Dust Tornado is good. It's kind of like MST, which you want to run in this format because it's very trap-heavy. But if for some reason you don't want to run MST, Dust Tornado is the second best choice. Or if for some reason your opponent is like locking out your magic and traps, they're like running a closed uh, forest. No, what's that one card? It's a field spell card where you can't activate spell or where you can't activate spell cards. Then Dust Tornado is a great side in against that since you can destroy that field spell card with this. And it's also good in decks if you really want to go into a destroy your opponent's back row heavy deck. Dust Tornado with some MSTs isn't actually half bad. And then we have Honorable Mentions. These cards are pretty good in every deck like these ones are, except they're not as good as all these. We have the Transmigration Prophecy. It's a great card to stop monsters that are being targeted for effects in the grave, like if they're using a Junk Synchron or a Debris Dragon or a Special Summoning out a... Uh, what is it? A Dragon Ruler. You can use this card to send it back to the deck you know, after they've already used their cost. and Or, you know, if they're targeting something for Call the Haunted, send it back to the deck. It's great for that, and it's actually really good. It's just, there are so many better alternatives. Sakuretsu Armor used to be the best before Dimensional Prison came out, because it's pretty much the same thing as Dimensional Prison, except it destroys the monster. And, like I said earlier, there's a lot of cards uh, that can't be destroyed. And Sakuretsu Armor wouldn't really do anything against them. That's why you don't really play Mirror Force as well either, because of all those cards that, you know, if they're playing a good deck, they'll probably have some kind of card which can't be destroyed by card effects, or some way to stop them, and banishing them pretty much goes beyond that. So if they attack the Draco Sack, Sakuretsu Armor wouldn't be able to stop them, but if they attack the Draco Sack, Dimensional Prison or Dimensional Slide would be able to stop them. Uh, we. Uh, Phoenix Wing Wind Blast would be absolutely one of the best cards if you didn't have to discard a card to activate it. That discard cost for basically this is a minus one since you actually have to use the card itself plus another card in your hand to activate its effect. Any kind of card that has any kind of discard cost better have a really great effect for it. And this one does have a really good effect. It sends it to the top of their deck which means I'll have to draw into it, which can result in a hand neutral type thing where the hand and field advantage comes out neutral if they draw into it and they can't use it because they pretty much skip their draw phase. So it is good, but it has that really nasty discard effect and there's a lot of 
better alternatives. And Black Horn of Heaven. It's like a solemn warning without the cost. Because usually you're going to use solemn warning for a special summon. You should save it for a special summon, or for a really nasty monster. But the thing with Solemn Warding is you have a choice in which you can use it on a normal summon or a special summon. While with Black Corn of Heaven, it's only on a special summon. And that can... it's still good because it has no cost to it, and it negates a special summon and destroys it, which is really good in itself. But it only works on special summons. So it's not as good as Solemn Morning, and it's not as good as all these other cards.